Everyone that's listening right now, I want, I want you to hear me what I'm getting ready to say at this particular stage. I want you to wrap your brain around what I'm getting ready to share in the scriptures right now. Hallelujah. For a lot of people that don't understand that there's a cost to living for God, and especially as you mature in the things of Christ, I want you to check out this scripture that I'm getting ready to read. It's in St. Luke chapter 9, starting at verse number 57. St. Luke chapter 9, verse number 57. It says, And it came to pass that as they went in a way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Now watch this. Now listen to Jesus' response. Then Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Imagine that. Imagine that that's the response you get. Hallelujah. Now let's keep on reading. Verse number 59 says, And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Now, this is, the, this is, this is Jesus' response in verse 60. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the gospel. Imagine hearing that. All right? Now, let's, let's read verse 61. It says, And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Verse 62 says, And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Imagine hearing that. We're not used to hearing stuff like that in today's terminology. But Jesus is expressing the cost of truly following him, being honest. And there's lots of people that have not grasped the concept that following Jesus is not always convenient. Sometimes there are going to be some sacrifices made. Now, on the heels of that, we go to chapter 10. Now, back now understand that the original manuscripts and scriptures were, were not broken up into chapters and titles. So we have to believe that chapter 10 is a continuation of what went on in chapter 9 because it says in verse number 1 after these things after these things the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face and into every city and place whither he himself would come so we know that's a continuation on the heels of what he said in those previous verses then he prepares the 70 to go forth and manifest the kingdom of God Oh, my Jesus. So I'm going to keep on reading, and we're going to tie some aspects of this together. It says in verse number two, it says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. And then he gives them um, commands. He said, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lamb among wolves. Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes and salute no man by the way. In other words, don't be distracted. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. That's powerful within itself. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. That's powerful. Hallelujah. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire go not from house to house. So he's also telling them that there's going to be provision in, in this particular assignment. This is all a divinely, I mean, divinely connected setup. And he said, now watch this, check this out. Sometimes you have to read stuff to, to see, see it in, in its proper context. And he, and he said in verse number eight, and into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, 
eat such things as are set before you. Now, this is the criteria for those that receive, receive, receive the disciples set before you. And then in, the, in those same cities, and heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. That is the set. Of, that that is the set of criteria. That's that's the set of, of what's supposed to go down for those for the city that that they're received in. All right. Now, verse number ten gives us a, a, another situation. Watch this. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not. Go your ways out of the out into the streets of that same of that same, and say even the very dust of your city. We're talking about the whole city now which cleaveth on, on us, we do wipe off against you, notwithstanding. Be ye sure of this, oh my God, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. That is the set of circumstances for, for the city, not the individuals, the city that receives them not. Hallelujah. So, so wrap your brain around that. Wrap your spirit around that for, for a minute. Hallelujah. So as we read verse number 12, it says, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in the day, in that day for Sodom than for that city. That is a powerful set of circumstances that is there. Now, these 70 going out two by twos were sent on, a, uh, on divine assignments. They were sent to specific towns and cities in order, for, in order to manifest the kingdom of God. The will of God was for them to preach the gospel. That, that was what they were sent to do. The will of God was for them to heal the sick. And among other things, they was also commanded not to go from house to house. That was the will of God. Hallelujah. Now, where they were sent was also part of the will of God too. Now, we, we see a lot, you can derive a lot of things out of this. But, hallelujah. But under understanding that when we talk about the concept of the will of God, when we, when we read it in its proper context and we get up to verse number 17, we understand that they eventually returned back to Jesus. So they was on a temporary assignment. They was out there for a specific amount of time, hallelujah, in order to do the will of God. Now, when you go into a place, we would have to assume by reading that it wasn't a one, wasn't a one day extravaganza, that they spent some, some considerable time in the place because it told them not to go from house to house. They was there. They was to stay there till they was to depart. So that means they was there for specific, um, for for an allotted um, allotted amount of time. Hallelujah. But we see the manifestation of the kingdom of God, and but but we understand that there was some certain criteria that was set in all of this. So. When we deal with the will of God, we have to break everything down in proper components. So let's continue to deal with this right now. Let me retract again. Hallelujah. Now, there was 30. Now, listen, there, there was 70. It says 70. So there was 35 um, groups of two, basically. And they went out two by two into a specific region that we know during those particular times. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have cars. Maybe the, the mode of transportation other than by foot was maybe a donkey or a horse. Who knows? But the reality is they were sent to a specific region, and this was in preparation for where Jesus was to come. Oh, my Jesus. He crawled by Sunday. They were saturating the area, area in preparation. Hallelujah. Because when we read in previous verses in chapter 9, we see that Jesus is, is have his mind and heart set to go to, to, towards Jerusalem because he, he knew the time for him to being taken up and being in, in, in going up back to the Father was at hand. So we know that this was all a divine strategy in order to prepare the way for him as he was going to Jerusalem. He cried by Sunday. They was preparing the way and manifesting the kingdom of God. Oh, so so, so basically what we're dealing with right here is this. We're dealing with the will of God. Hallelujah. We know ultimately, as far as Jesus was concerned, the will of God for, for him was to go to Jerusalem, you know, and ultimately he was to be crucified. He was to die and then he was to be resurrected. And he was to be raised up. That was all part of the will of God for him. 
Now, the will of God for all of us has different components. Let me break this down. Hallelujah. There is a what? What is the will of God for you? What is the purpose that God has called you to? Second part is, where is God sending you concerning his will? Where is the will of God for you at this particular stage of your life? And we're going to tie this together. Third aspect, who is God sending you to? Who is God sending you to administer to? And who is God connecting you, connecting you to? Because we also see in this that Jesus paired them up by two. So in the pairing, there was a will of God. There was a divine connection with the person that was being sent to go forth with the other one. Hallelujah. So we was dealing with these components. And then the other aspect, because we know this was a temporary situation, because we know in verse 17, they eventually returned back. We understand that when does the will of God end for that particular season in, in, their, in, 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 their, in their journey? When does the will of God end for a specific season in your life? And that's important to understand because the will of God takes on components. Now, now, now check this out. As we grow in the things of God, as we mature in the things of God, there's components of what we do that change. In some aspects of life, we're not mature enough to do certain things, so God delegates an assignment based upon that. Then there comes a point as we start to grow and mature in the things of God, then God gives us more responsibility. And, and so the, the will of God takes on different stages. And also, too, on top of that, the people that God puts us in contact with also change as the will of God changes in our life. There's some people that are there for a lifetime. Then there's some that are there for seasons in your life. And we don't, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, don't get discouraged by the people that leave because the season has changed, because that's the way it's supposed to be. Many times, and I've done this, so many times we try to hold on to the, the, the situations too long. I've been in situations where I had a sense that things was changing, but in some cases I stayed in, in, in an environment a little bit too long for my own good. So understanding that even in a good thing, there comes a time and a place that the will of God changes. And this is clear. Give you this illustration. God may send you to a specific location. God may start you out a specific place. And many people, because God sends them there, think that that's the final destination. That is not the case for pretty much all of us. Hallelujah. Now, understand from a stand, let's, let's deal with this from a standpoint point of maturity. The ultimate goal of Jesus is to mature you that you can be more dependent upon him from the standpoint of being able to hear him, being able to be guided, lead and directed. We know that there's many people that are listening right now that do not have a proper relationship with God. So, so say, for example, if you are divinely led to a specific place, many people think that that's where they're supposed to stay. That may be true for some, but in a lot of cases, for most people, that's not the case. You have to understand when the seasons of your life change, that your assignment change. Now, the will of God is always going to be the manifested kingdom. Jesus talked more about the kingdom than he, than he did talk about the church. So, but there's different components to administering the kingdom plan of God. And as you become mature in the things of God, you start to see the other elements because remember the resources of heaven are endless. The revelation that comes from God and the plan of God is endless. In other words, God does not have a ceiling on how, far, how high you go in the things of God while you're on this earth. This is the thing. You, you work until your assignment is complete, but many people fall short of the completion of their assignment. 
And this is something that we want to activate in every one of you that's listening right now. Ikra Baba Sunday. There are there are things, places, and people and seasons in your life. Things, places, people, and seasons in your life. There's things that you need to do, places you need to go, people you need to see, and knowing the time frame and all of that. That is very powerful. And when we grasp a hold of that, we don't get too frustrated. Hallelujah. And also, too, we realize that even in these seasons that God actually sends us place, there's a distinct possibility that, there, that you're going to deal with obstacles and you may deal with rejection. But from what we've read in, in, in the scriptures, that's all part of the protocol of God. Denial does not mean that you are that you're not walking in the will of God. Hallelujah. You have the potential to either be embraced or rejected, even in the will of God. So don't let rejection be the final criteria as the as, as the model of success. Because the truth of the matter is, is a good distinct possibility that everybody's not going to receive what you have to say but yet you're still in the will of God. As a matter of fact, you need to be concerned if everybody receives everything that you say. Hallelujah. You may want to get back in your prayer closet and ask, and, and ask the Lord, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Because the truth of the matter is the will of God is not complicated when it comes to, to the mind of God. This is one of the reasons why we encourage you to stay connected to the source. His name is Jesus. He crawled out said, when we stay connected to the source, we can, we can learn how to na navigate into the will of God. He crawled out by Sunday. Now, every one of you need, sometimes you need a refreshing. And, the, and changes are already built into the will of God. This is the thing. God calls us to, to go from glory to glory and faith to faith in our lifetime. You should not be the same person that you was when you first got saved. And certainly, even in the course of life, you're not the same person mentally at 40 that you was at 21. You're not the same person. So we understand that if in the natural context of, 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 of progression, you need to understand that in the spiritual progression, it's the same thing. Oh, my Jesus. You need to know and you need to prepare yourself. Do not get comfortable in the seasons in your life. Embrace them for, for, for what they teach you and what you get out of it. But understand that God is always going to have more until your assignment is complete. And when your assignment is complete, then, 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 that, then that's a done deal. But you want to you always stay on the pulse of what God is doing. We declare, oh God, we want the spirit of revelation to be released on you. Many people are far short of the will of God for their lives. Hallelujah. Many people are stuck in a place. Hallelujah. And that's where a lot of people get frustrated because when you're in a place too long, you're going to deal with frustration. And many times we're rebuking the devil when, when the frustration is actually there to get us to move to a new direction. I feel this right now. God is wanting you to move to a different direction. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Oh, hear the voice of the prophet today. We declare that over you in the name of Jesus. He cried by Sunday. Because in the will of God, hear me clearly, there's always going to be provision. When things start to dry up where you are, you need to start to look to see where the provision is. Because even when God sent Elijah to his assignment, he was sent to a specific spot and place. But then when the water, when the, when the water started to drop, when the brook started to dry up, God had to prepare him for the change in plan. Oh, my Jesus. So let's deal with this again. The what, the where, the who, and the when the change comes. Oh, my Jesus. This is where you are right now. Somebody needs this message right now. He crawled by Sunday beyond the cutting edge of when God is changing your assignment. He crawled by Sunday. 
Embrace where you are when God has brought you into your season, but always understand that seasons change. We pray God's blessing over you and those that are listening right now. We release an anointing in the atmosphere where you are. We declare that the atmosphere where you are changes in the name of Jesus. And we release the healing power of God. Hey, glory, we thank you for your presence right now. Thank you for the airwaves being saturated with your presence. Do what you do, Lord. We thank you. And everybody that's listening right now, we want you to receive the anointing. Hallelujah. We seal this right now in Jesus' name that not one word falls to the ground. Let the presence of God touch you where you are. Feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be revived and strengthened today in the presence of God. Oh, Hey, glory. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for heaven on earth. Oh, my God, we thank you for changing the atmosphere. Let the spirit of revelation and illumination come over them right now in the name of Jesus. We seal this right now in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless those that are listening right now. This is your message for the hour. What, where, who, and when it changes. We want you to be blessed today. This is a continuation. We love you in Jesus. This is Apostle Young. We declare God's ridiculous, hilarious, roll upon the ground, laughable favor. Oh, for a good measure, let me give, oh, no, never mind. We ain't, we ain't gonna do this right now. We'll do, the, we'll do this another time in another place. Be blessed to the Lord. Oh, matter of fact, now let's, matter of fact, let's go ahead and do this. We wanna release kingdom authority over you right now. So I want you to repeat after me, wherever you are, repeat after me. We have dominion over bullets, knives, guns, sticks, bombs, natural disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, over accidents of all kinds, over sickness and disease, over poverty, over the spirit of poverty, over every demonic spirit, the weather, wind, and sea obey us. Point to yourself and say, we have dominion. We are the carriers of the power presence, anointing, and the glory of God right now. Our shadow carries the glory of God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That also includes liars and backbiters. We are one with heaven. Check this out. Listen, whatever we bind or loose on earth, repeat that, whatever we bind or loose on earth shall be bound or loose in heaven. We are representatives of heaven on the earth. Check this out. The blind see. The deaf hear, the dumb speak, the lame walk, the dead are raised, the lepers are cleansed, the gospel is preached to the poor. Say this, creative miracles are ours in Jesus' name. Point to yourself again and say, we are supernatural. No prison or handcuffs can hold us. The spirit of ISIS and every terrorist group, that includes every hate group, we have, we, they are defeated. Every hate group is defeated in Jesus' name. Oh, my Jesus. We declare the divine protection of the Holy Ghost over you right now. Receive that today. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Count the cost, beloved. Following Jesus is not easy, but it's worth the reward. When you count the cost and pay the price, the dividends on the other side is well worth it. Oh my God, we receive it in the name of Jesus. We'll talk to you again. Oh my God, oh God. I keep on, hallelujah. We declare a heavenly place over every one of you in the name of Jesus. We'll talk to you again in a not too distant future. We prophesy the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Talk to you soon.